Hello fellow contractors, it's Caleb with Pave Tool, and this week we're going to be going through drain installation, we're going to go through the tools that you need, and some tricks to do it. So let's jump in. So the tools that are going to be necessary for installing a drain, you're going to need some way of marking the pipe, so a marker, Sharpie, pencil, anything to mark. You're going to want a saw, you can use the cutoff saw like we have here, a sawzall, a grinder, anything to cut. You're going to need pipe, SDR 35. You can use triple wall as well. If you want to use schedule 40, you'll then need a fern co. And then you'll need some fittings. Um, I use a T, you can use a 90 as well. And this one here, I do a cap on the bottom for a clean out. So we can kind of go through some of those tips later, but these are the typical tools you'll need as well as glue for gluing those fittings together. So those are the necessary tools, let's jump in. couple tricks when installing a drain. There's a couple ways you can exit the water. You can use a 90, but if dirt was to go down through the drain, it will sometimes fill that pipe with debris. What I've done is I take a piece of T-pipe or T-fitting and I put a cap on the bottom so any sediment that goes into the drain collects into that and then you have the ability to undo the drain and then clean that cavity out and get all that debris instead of clogging up the pipe. Another tip is when you're putting on your fittings to make a couple marks so you can see when this pipe is totally on. You take a tape measure and measure and make that mark for that distance so you know when you're all the way on. But I find that you'll start to see it bounce when you're hitting it on. I also suggest using a Sim 60. It's a rubber mallet so when you're hitting that pipe on, you're not apt to break it. A steel hammer, you're gonna find it to break. So that's another neat little trick. So we'll put that fitting in there. Tap that on, and now it started to bounce, so I know exactly where it needs to be. We'll also tap this down into place. So we want that to be nice and level. Obviously our pipe pitching out. So the next step is gonna be getting the height of your pipe. This can be done with a tape measure and our laser rod with a laser. You can see we're doing that there. Hold that tape measure, we'll bring that down until it's peeping solid. So it's roughly six inches to the bottom of this here. That's gonna be the top of our bevel on our pipe. So now we'll take this here and we'll make a mark down six inches from where that pipe is gonna go in. So we're gonna have six inches there, we'll make a mark. Now, the nice part about the drain is it does have three and a half inches of play. So you have about an inch and three quarters up, inch and three quarters down. So you don't have to get it perfect. You do have that little bit of variance to play with it. So the next part is gonna to be to put our pipes together. The upright parts are important to glue. So that way, when you wanna adjust that height, it's not undoing the couplers of the actual drain itself. So we're gonna take a little bit of glue. We'll glue these up. This so one here's a primer and a glue all in one. You can primer it and glue it as well. And we're gonna put that on. And then what we'll do is we wanna make sure that we're getting this to be somewhat level so that our drain is not on a 45 or pitching on top. So we're gonna take this here, we'll get that level. So it looks like we gotta go down just a little bit on that one side. And again, I find it Sim 60 to be a very useful tool when doing this. So then we can kind of make those adjustments without cracking the pipe. So we're level that way. And we're just about level that way. Go just a little bit more. Okay, let's see. You can see there, we're pretty good there and pretty good there. Obviously, we can make some minor adjustments as we install it as well. That should be good. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll dry fit it. So I'll set this alongside, check the top of the drain just to make sure we're somewhat in the right ballpark. You want to make sure that you're not gluing that on and then having to take it all back apart. Not bad.
Once you have the drain level, what you do is backfill with stone around there. On the final step, we'll just check the height, make sure we're on, and again, you have that inch and three quarters of play, so there's no need to get it perfect. Once you're grading, laying your pavers, that's when you can make those fine adjustments. It also spins, so keep in mind, there's no need to have to worry about setting this thing square off the house. We're not pulling string lines across to try to square this up so when we lay our pavers, it's straight with our bond lines. We don't have to worry about that. All we have to worry about is getting the height somewhat close. We're good to go, so let's backfill this. Next step, we'll be laying the pavers, making those final adjustments. Another trick when installing the drain is the height of this flange on the bottom is three inches. So with a two and three eighths paver and you get one inch of your bedding layer, whether it's number eight stone or sand, you wanna be down in that three inches to the top of your base. So that's what that three inch flange is so you can know when your base is good, when it comes right to the bottom of that flange. Now we're doing the paver installation. You see we have our pieces ready to go in, but unfortunately the drain is on a little bit of an angle here. The beauty of that adjustable drain is that it's easy to spin. So we're able to spin that and adjust it to where we want it to be. So we make it nice and straight with our bond lines. It's eliminating us from having to pull string lines before we even get started laying the pavers or even doing the base. Last step is gonna be adjusting that drain height to getting that an eighth inch below the chamfer. To do so, you'll need a 9 16th socket, wrench, or even adjustable to get that into place. So we're gonna tighten that down. Again, an eighth inch below that chamfer. You'll wanna do this before you sweep it in. If you have material underneath there, it will tend to break that bond in the glue and pull the drain out. So we wanna make sure we do this before we sweep in. Get that down into place right where we want it to be. And then obviously another little trick is taping off your drain so that way when you're sanding in, you're not filling that drain up with that sand material. We do offer this in plastic as well. As you can see here, depending on what the client likes and the taste, they have two different options. Now that we've adjusted this drain, the next step will be sweeping in. If you wanna see some information on how to use Extreme Easy and sweep in, click the video on the screen. Thanks again for watching this week's tip of the week. If you have any questions on how to install a drain, you can go to pavetool.com. You can also give us a call. Hope you found this information valuable. Thanks again. You can also check us out on Instagram, Facebook, pavetool.com, and you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel.